Star Wars 7x7 episode 2899 today. The first half of a new conversation with Nick Martarelli, the executive producer at Penguin Random House Audio, who is responsible for Star Wars audio book and audio drama production. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the re-recordings for the Essential Legends collection. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So about 480 episodes ago, <laughs> give or take, I had Nick Martarelli come on the show to talk about the High Republic storytelling initiative and how that was affecting Penguin Random House Audio and the way that they were presenting Star Wars audiobooks and audio dramas, considering that we were in an entirely new phase of Star Wars storytelling. So. Now that we have the Essential Legends collection out and that there have been re-recordings of books from that time and uh, unabridged for the first time for many of them, I thought maybe it would be interesting to ask some about that and find out about the productions of these stories. And as usual <laughs> with my conversations with Nick, we'll go off into tangents. So we'll be talking about the higher public a little bit, about current Star Wars storytelling a little bit, about different narrators and about the production process and what's to come. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get into it. Here is part one of my conversation with Nick Martarelli, my latest conversation with Nick Martarelli, who is an executive producer with Penguin Random House Audio. Nick Martarelli, welcome back to Star Wars 7x7. How are you today? I am well, Alan. Thank you for having me back. It's always fun to be here. Oh, it's great to have you back here. And it was so great to see you in person again. This is the first time in three years at Star Wars Celebration. Oh, my gosh. I know. That was terrific. I'm so glad you came by. How was Celebration for you and for the whole Penguin Random House Audio team? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, like you said, it was all. it was great to be back in person. Great to see everybody again. And um, we got to uh, do a fun panel about our audio originals. We announced the new one, The Battle of Jedha. So it was, a, it was a very fun show, a very fun show for us. Yeah, and that's going to be very exciting. I cannot wait to learn more about The Battle of Jedha, which is, of course, a High Republic audio situation. And George Mann, his first, um, his first foray into the... Well, no, it's not really his first foray into the High Republic. He's done a couple of like younger readers things, but this is his first audio script with you guys, I think. Correct. Yeah, he's written a lot of Doctor Who audio, I believe, but this is going oh. to be his first Star Wars audio for the High Republic. That is awesome. Very much looking forward to that. And we are actually here not to talk about the High Republic this time around. Uh, we're actually going to be talking about the Essential Legends collection, which has been rolling since, I think, April of last year. You're on uh, wave three, approaching wave four four right now is that right uh that sounds right uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm putting you on the spot with that i will double check that but i think that's about right because of you know with shadow point or shatter point excuse me and then um the two in rogue squadron that have come out so yeah we're three waves in and the fourth wave coming in august so you know that whole thing i i guess you would have found out probably in the year 2020 that the you know, Essential Legends collection was going to be happening and that you would be re-recording audiobooks for that. So you can you cast your mind back to that initial moment when you found out what the plan was and how audiobooks were going to be involved in that? Sure. I mean, it was uh, utterly exciting. Like, I mean, I was, I was thrilled to come back and, and revisit some of these things. Um, I am of an age that I grew up reading the Star Wars books, the expanded universe. Uh, it's not an original story to say that Heir to the Empire was the first one I read. <laughs> yep. Um, but so when this was announced, the Essential Legends collection and some of these would be, some of the books would be getting reprint. They would all be getting brand new covers. And part of that was that anything that was previously available only as an abridged audiobook would be getting an unabridged. And so that has been a lot of fun to go back and uh, look at these books from uh, from previous Star Wars eras and and record them. Yeah, I I feel like we've been kind of spoiled at least with the the current canon as it's constitu constituted 
that doesn't sound like an actual word uh, <laughs> as it exists right now uh, because every audio um, every book um, that has come out that has had an audiobook adaptation has been unabridged so it's, it seems kind of shocking to consider that there were ever Star Wars audiobooks released where they were abridged but I, I guess that was a thing oh absolutely yeah I mean in, in, the, in the you know back <laughs> Back in the olden days, uh, <laughs> audiobooks needed to go on cassettes before there were even CDs. And before cassettes, an audiobook had to fit on a record. And so, like, the format has dictated them so much that once digital audio became available and we all started carrying around computers in our pockets where we could listen to these digital audiobooks, it was the length of a, a CD or the length of a cassette tape that really dictated how long the books would be. Aside from the books that would be produced in like 24 cassettes, you know, like <laughs> full, true unabridged audiobooks. But that was still a, a rarity compared to the sort of like, all right, we're gonna do Heir to the Empire, but we're gonna do it on two cassettes. <laughs> so, you know, everything else is gonna get cut out. And so I imagine that's a whole, that's probably more of an editorial process necessarily. Like it's already abridged before it would get to the, the audio team at that point. Is that generally how it might have worked? To be honest, I have no idea. This is long before me. I have, oh, I've, yes. never, I've never produced an, I've never produced an abridged audiobook. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Uh, I have only ever done them unabridged. And in fact, when I started working in audio, that was my first question. I was like, so how do we, decide and they were they were basically like we don't really do much of those anymore because, <laughs> because like our because we're aiming so much at digital audio it's like there's no real reason to and you know i don't know if i've ever actually asked you this but how long have you been doing what you do which of course you know I've, I've already mentioned it in the introduction for sure but you know for listeners who are not familiar with you you are an executive producer at penguin random house audio so um how long have you been doing what you've been doing uh i've been doing it for about six or seven years mm -hmm. um uh, i was uh, i was in book publishing in ebook publishing before that and uh then moved into audiobooks got it excellent yeah, the idea of a of an audiobook on vinyl just sounds crazy. And yet, you know, I'm also of an age where, you know, like Mission to Ord Mantel on a 45 with the page ding to turn your, you know, companion book, you know, that's that's still within my range. So. That's a that's a great I had forgotten about those, but that is a great uh point of comparison. Exactly. You know, it has to be a certain length. To fit mm -hmm. there and then oh wait we can come to his cassette tape now we can do a cd now we don't even have to worry about cds we can just make them make them all unabridged so i know that you said that the whole abridged situation is before your time in the industry per se but i'm wondering if you went back to any of that stuff and the reason why i'm asking is because we had a previous conversation about the high republic and about how you approached creating something that would sort of stand alone in a way from other Star Wars productions so that you could tell this was an entirely different environment, a different universe, a different era, as it were, um, to make it sound uh, different from what our original and prequel trilogy and sequel trilogy era Star Wars sounds like. I'm wondering what you might have done to recreate a soundscape for the Essential Legends collection. Like, how did you approach the re-recording for those in terms of creating something that would be audibly original, so to speak? Uh, to be honest with you, we, we didn't. We just looked at these as audiobooks. They're just new, they're new audiobooks that are coming out for the first time today. And so I, I think if we, if we were to have gone back it would sort of not be moving them forward mm -hmm. like part of the whole part of the whole appeal of the of this collection i think as a fan is the sort of like hey here it is again like we've got it we it's all here none of it ever went away it's mm -hmm. all still here so these unabridged audiobooks that we're doing is that same kind of idea it's like here it is here is mark thompson doing x-wing rogue squadron as an unabridged audiobook no no sort of like, you know, old timey microphone filters or 
clip clop of horses sound effects like like just truly like they're star wars so here it is here is here is this star wars story done as a star wars audiobook um you know sort of full throttle ahead yeah when you put it like that i guess it is a bit of a silly question on my part because <laughs> it's not like mark is trying to you know do a a younger voice we're not putting him through respeacher like we're doing with you know mark hamill's voice and luke skywalker and you know the mandalorian of <laughs> the book of boba fett or anything like that it is you know a fully realized you know mark thompson uh for you know the rogue uh for the rogue squadron stories but that actually was not the first new unabridged one you did the first one that you did was Shatterpoint and that's a Mace Windu novel and it was read by Sullivan Jones now I know Sullivan has been doing the the narration thing for quite a while but this was his first Star Wars gig if I'm not terribly mistaken what was that like working with him and bringing him into the galaxy fold Oh, he was great. I've worked with Sullivan before on other audiobooks, and I've always been a fan of him and his work. And we got uh, we got the assignment to do Shatterpoint, and it was that sort of moment. It's like, all right, well, we just you know, all we needed to cast is Mace Windu. Shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I I was such a fan of Sullivan from the other work that um, that that I'd done with him. I was he was he was the sort of like first one I thought of as as a as a candidate. Um, and then right around the time he did Shatterpoint, he was actually in Tempest Runner as well. Um, ah. Because he is one of our, he's part of our ensemble in Tempest Runner. And I cannot remember off the top of my head which one came out first, but it was sort of like we were doing them both right around the same era of, uh, of last summer. And it was a sort of thing where it's like he is, he's digging into this prequel era stuff. And then he's also going back to the High Republic to play, um, Bala and a few other characters in uh, in Tempest Runner, and uh, he's great. I love him. He's he 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 really sort of finds that no nonsense ness that you need in Shatterpoint, and it's just incredible. Yeah, he is fantastic. I I think Shatterpoint came out first because I want to say it was April of last year, and that Tempest Runner was August, but. Um, I, I don't know if I would swear to that, but, you know, fascinating that he's also doing two starkly different eras at the same time. And, you know, if that, uh, you know, I wonder how that affects performance or if it's just simply that it's character, like it's not necessarily, you know, adopting, you know, part of the whole, you know, the atmosphere or the era, or, you know, the, the old timey filter, <laughs> if you will. I mean. Well, and part of it too is like, you know, in, in Shatterpoint, he's playing, Mace and Yoda and Palpatine, and in Tempest Runner, he gets he's playing characters we've never heard before. So he's getting to, it's it's two different kinds of skill sets as well as all the new characters in Shatterpoint too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely two different challenges too, yeah. because obviously we're all carrying the you know the emotional weight of Mace Windu and Yoda and characters with whom we're familiar into into Shatterpoint listening and we don't have that same situation when we walk into Tempest Runner. Exactly. Yeah. So with that first recording and you know maybe you've already kind of answered this one but you you get one under your belt and you do you feel like you you know learn anything new about re-recording these Essential Legends collection or recording your first Essential Legends collection audio that affects how you look at subsequent productions, whether it's specifically to the Essential Legends collection or even how you know, it might affect future non-Legends productions. I mean, one thing that's one thing that's been interesting about doing the Legends books is we know where the story is going in a mm -hmm. way that we don't always when we're recording new front list books. You know, like we we're doing when we do an Alphabet Squadron. We don't necessarily know what the sequel is, but when we start Rogue Squadron, we know what happens in Wedge's Gamble and Kratos Trap and Back to War and things like that. So there are opportunities to sort of like think about, oh, this character shows up much, much later. So let's make sure they're very clear. Let's, let's sort of have these, these, these thinking, these thoughts as we go, because we understand the whole story at a swoop, you know? Uh, which is different from the way we normally work. You know, normally we, we're working on a book at a time in a series. And then when that next book comes out in the, in the series, we work on that one. And this time through, it's, it's sort of like, oh, we get to work on the whole series at once, which is actually pretty fun. 
we haven't quite recorded any of them back to back, but like that's also part of the plan. It's like, all right, we know we're doing the the rogues, so let's. How many of them can we do at once? <laughs> All right, we're going to pause it there and we will pick up with the second half of the conversation on tomorrow's episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this show as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.